Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna go over how to operate a cherry picker forklift. Check this out. Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be going over how to operate a cherry picker or order picker. Some people will call them. It's basically a forklift that you stand on. Uh, a lot of times used in warehouses where a, a worker has to be on the platform with the pallet as they go up and down to pick off certain pieces uh, that they might be loading a pallet with. Now the first thing, uh, I do want to thank Storm Creek Apparel here in Minnesota. They're actually letting us use their warehouse and their cherry picker, so big shout out to them. Uh, and then the, the next piece, and which you've seen I think on every one of my videos, I am not claiming to be an expert. Uh, I've operated a cherry picker a few times, uh, but I just really want to show you guys what I've learned. I think more importantly, I'd love to have in the comments below for many people, anyone that runs these uh, maybe daily, tips and tricks or mistakes uh, you might have made. So with that said, let's go ahead and check this thing out. Okay, so the first thing, uh, this video's not, we're not, we've already done a pre-op inspection. This machine's already been running for the day, but I think any piece of equipment, you do a pre-op inspection on the piece. Uh, as I've said in other videos, you don't get intimidated. I feel like a lot of people get intimidated uh, because they feel like they need to be a mechanic or know how to operate it. A lot of it's just common sense. If something doesn't look right, that's where you need to investigate further. As with any piece of machinery, I'd make sure you check the manual uh, and know exactly the different pieces of that. So with this, you'll see again, the platform here is where uh, the operator will stand, with the forks up front, but I'm going around the machine. These are electric, so there are battery packs on here that uh, typically an electric machine, you know, obviously you wanna make sure you have full charge. They can swap out battery packs on these, uh, but that's probably one of the downsides to an electric machine. It can only run as long as that battery, whereas a propane or other power source can be swapped out. Again, continuing to look around the machine. Now, typically uh, these cherry pickers are their three wheel machines. So with any uh, forklift video you've seen, uh, almost always the pivot point, the wheels are in the front of the machine that are stationary, they're fixed. That's your pivot point. Uh, it's very important. That's the biggest thing to practice on these because it's like it takes a little bit of getting used to driving with the wheel behind you. Uh, now this machine is a, a single wheel in there, which typically there's either a three wheel or four wheel model. Uh, three wheels are, are in the center and they have a typically a tighter turning radius, whereas a four wheel is a little bit wider stance on the machine, uh, but can't typically steer as tight. Now with the cherry picker, typically there's two arms on each side. Uh, these are safety features. Basically the machine won't run with these uh, up. So generally wanna have those down. And then got a couple pieces here. Your uh, forks are, uh, are fixed. They don't pitch like a typical forklift. They remain flat. And then you'll see kind of a, I call it a grabber in the center there. That's what actually will lock onto the center of the pallet. I'm gonna show you those controls in a moment. Now, I'm, uh, before I start this up, I'm gonna go over some of the basic controls. With a cherry picker, anything where uh, the operator can be elevated, you do need to wear a harness. So, and I'll show you that in a moment. But typically coming on, uh, with any of these stand-up forklifts, they have, uh, I call it a dead man switch. So it's right down here. Basically the machine will not run if that is not depressed. So if at any point I come off of that, the machine will stop. Now I will warn you, uh, most forklifts that have this, that is not a method you wanna use to stop the machine. That is purely an emergency situation because we'll, we'll demonstrate a little bit. If I let off that, it will stop and it'll start stop pretty abruptly. Uh, and then the other foot pedals here, these are just your locks for the grabber there. So you'll see if I push down on that, that's gonna close the two teeth there. And then this is my release on that. And again, depending on the uh, cherry picker, they all have these as different, some are different formats a little bit, but those are the two pieces there. And then uh, coming up, really it's, they're, I mean, they're fairly simple. They're just a little bit awkward to drive. Uh, so this is basically your forward and reverse. So just like this, one way or the other. And you'll see that in a moment. And then my up and down is the, my thumb right here. And then the final thing, there's a button that's gonna be the horn that we're gonna use if we're changing direction. And then steering is this on the left side here. Uh, other than that, we got the key up there. We'll turn it on in a moment and then lights. I'll show you all that in a moment. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, now I'm gonna get off. I'm gonna go ahead and put the harness on. Okay, so as I get the harness off, I'm on, I also wanna point out, any forklift is going to have, you always wanna look at the plate on there that kinda gives your, your weight, your capacity. You always need to know your machine. 
So that's important to always understand the weight that you can lift on the machine. And with any thing you're raising up high, I tell people low and tight to the ground is where you're most stable. So that's the key is you don't want to be doing a lot of uh, positioning, changing directions when you're up high, generally low and tight to the ground. Now with these, uh, and again, each harness, they're a little bit different. Uh, typically you kind of put them on like a backpack almost. So you take that. So once you get the top on, then sometimes I've seen buckles on here. There's a lot of different ways that these will connect. This one's fairly simple right there. And then it's just grabbing the leg straps. So if you kind of grab right through, now you don't want them, obviously you want them tight enough to hold you, but obviously you're gonna be moving around a lot. So you don't wanna make them too tight. This is something you ideally want to get all set up before because you definitely know you're not going to be adjusting this when you're up in the air at all. So you want to make sure it's comfortable. Um, but that's your harness. Again, some of these times you can tighten it up a little bit. Uh, for guys that are wearing these all day, I'm sure they've got their own uh, just to have this on all day. It's, they have a comfort level there. Now, after I have that on and get on the machine here. Now, this is what we're gonna be strapping into. Now, there's a couple different uh, types of uh, the way it'll attach. Um, this one actually, this release here, it's kind of like a seatbelt on the car. If I pull it hard, that's what's gonna stop uh, it from going on any further. But if I go slower, it'll go as far as I, I think it's got a six feet might be, but that's handy when you're up working in uh, on a pallets up there, you need a little bit of room to be able to go. Uh, so just understand that and then just make sure it's always secured on there. And then the clips, the carabiners on these, there's a little safety. So right now I can't open it. If you push on the underside there, that's how it's going to open up. And then typically you're just reaching over. And sometimes if you're new in this, you might have someone that is there with you, but you can feel it pretty well easily there. It's right near the top. And then I'm secured on that machine. So now, you always start this with the, your foot off the dead man switch, turn the key, one click there. It's gonna go through a series of checks on the machine. Got everything there. Now on my display here, I've got my battery level and then it also helps you with steering. There's little lights here that can tell me which way. Now with my left, again, this will turn the steering wheel one way or the other. It's not gonna do anything now because I don't have my foot on that dead man switch. And then my forward and reversed. And then on here, it's pretty simple. There is a fan here. Uh, these guys that are working in the warehouse that are really hot when they go up high, so they turn that on. And then they got two different lights that you can use. One's right above you. Uh, and in case these order pickers are usually using something there, uh, they're reading a, a portable to, uh, picker, a machine, that would basically a PDA that would be doing that, so. Okay, now the machine's on. Uh, again, foot will always be on the dead man switch there. Your sides have to be down uh, to move this machine. So again, it's fairly simple. You'll see if I, and again, I can see before I get started, there is an indicator here that'll tell me which may, my wheel is pointing. But again, if I just go nice and steady that way, it'll go forward. If I turn to the left, goes left, turn to the right, goes right. I find it easier to go that direction because it's a little bit more intuitive when I'm going. And then going back, looking behind you, now, if I just let off, you'll see, and I can show, let me back up and get a little bit more speed. So with these things and very similar to other like stand-up forklifts, if I just start going forward and I just let off, so my hand's not on that right now, it'll keep going. So the way you're gonna slow down is you're gonna just pull back just a little bit. You'd, obviously that's kind of your, it's an electric, so it doesn't have an actual brake on it. But if you pull back, that's what's gonna slow that machine down. And then again, as hard as I go, knowing that pivot point, so my fixed wheels are up front here, my steering is right in front. Um, so that's why if I go forward here, as hard as I turn that, it will just basically do a 360 one way. Or if I go to the left, it will go 360 that way. Like that. Now again, when I'm going distances, I find it's a little bit easier. Uh, to drive this forward. I'm almost leaning a little bit. The awkward part on these things is you're standing up, so you don't just want to be out here in the open a little bit. Uh, you want to have, you know, some. They, they actually put, you see how this is all recessed with the hand, your hand goes inside there. Sometimes leaning up against this a little bit, I find it gives you that stability uh, when you're driving. 
So that's driving uh, now the up and down. So again, there is the horn right there on that same one. Anytime you're changing direction coming out the end of an aisle, you wanna let people know you're there. And then it's just up and down for this. So if I do that, now typically you're not driving at all. So a lot of times I recommend when you're going up, having that hand on one of these, uh, you'll see there's handlebars on both sides. Of course, obviously knowing where you're at up top. So you wanna know your complete, how high you can go. Um, but then I'm up there. Now this is where if I was next to any kind of a rack or whatever, I'd be able to have the flexibility to flip this up and I can do that now, it just won't move and I can go over and typically I'm gonna have a pallet behind me there as well. And then going down, just pushing down on it gently. I always recommend having that extra hand because you're not typically gonna be driving when you're up there. You'll see, I mean, when I am up there, you can, if you need to do little adjustments, you'll just, I think it's more important then is really being careful when you're going because it's tough to see your base as well looking down there so usually i recommend trying to get it where you need to be and then try to avoid moving that machine at all once you're up high and again take your hand off and i'm going to go back down obviously most important part there is looking out where you're coming down and bringing that all the way down typically for these because you're not coming down on there's no uh, limit there it's you're almost bringing it all the way down if you do have a pallet on there I, usually maybe four inches off the ground on there but there's no tilt or anything on these types of machines now those are all the basic and again if i let my foot you know you know what i'll show i didn't go over the dead man switch here let's let me back up a little bit I'm gonna do it forward, that way when it stops, it pulls me forward, not back. But again, if I, I'm gonna hold on, take my hand off, but if I take this and I just let off of that, you see, that's gonna stop me. Again, you do not wanna just use that dead man as your stop, you saw what it does, it can really uh, catch you off, so, uh, but that's that. Now, from there, you know, the biggest thing getting used to is this maneuvering, driving uh, a forklift. And as I said before, the only way you can really get good on that is just driving, you know, getting more stick time. I always recommend setting up a practice area. You don't want to learn, you know, it's all about learning on the job, but it's not learning while you're actually trying to pick pallets and everything like that. Get some early stick time wherever your employer is set out. We set out cones. It's really easy. Um, I call it a pivot point drill. I think it's really important to understand where the, that pivot point is on your machine. So if and again, I, it's relatively easy if I'm leaning forward and looking forward where I'm going. It's just understanding I spin my back, you know, that tail end will kick out a little bit. So as I'm going through here, I'm going through a tight point. Once I know that pivot point's clear, I'm spinning it and I'm watching for the next one. And I know my pivot point right there is over it. Same thing, I'm looking on the left here and I know I can go as tight as I can and I'm just hugging that pivot point right there. Now I can't stress enough, uh, don't, speed comes with time. So the biggest thing is just don't go too fast, uh, especially when you're turning. In a large warehouse, you know, in a straight line, you're relatively safe to go, you know, a little bit quicker pace. But when you're turning and maneuvering, especially understanding this thing will roll a little bit, understanding, just take it nice and easy. Now the other direction, you're kind of looking over your shoulder, still knowing my pivot point. The key here though, is you kind of have to switch, looking the other way. Now again, I, I, it's very awkward for me to drive in that position, especially understanding there's usually gonna be a pallet on there. I recommend starting without a pallet on the machine. Uh, once you get more familiar, then you can really uh, have that. But again, I think it's so much easier to go this straight direction, looking straight out the front. Okay, bring it gently to a stop there, and that's when I can take my foot off. So after your foot's off there, uh, just turn that key right there. That'll shut it off, I'll shut off the light there. And then after that, it's just disconnecting from your harness, right there, and then you can step off. OK, 
Okay, so that's how to operate a cherry picker or order picker. Again, very entry level. Uh, we'll do a future episode that shows a little bit more technique when you actually have a palette on there. Uh, like I've said in the beginning, not an expert. I would actually love to hear from people that use these for a living. Please comment below. Share things that you've learned on there, tips, tricks, mistakes you've made. Uh, big shout out again to Storm Creek Apparel for letting us use their warehouse and their cherry picker. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs>